What is up guys? Welcome to another installment of Project RX8, Project Great Daily. For those of you who tuned in last time while we replaced the factory steering wheel with a Nardi unit, uh, I mentioned that the, my OEM battery was leaking acid and I was not putting it back in the car. Uh, so I, I removed that battery and I'm going with a lightweight battery option. And what I decided to try is a unit made by Shurai. Here's the unit itself. Um, it's rather small. It only weighs five pounds. It looks like this is something that would belong in a power wheel. Um, it is the largest, most powerful unit that they offer. I think I paid around $250, somewhere in that vicinity off of Amazon. Um, it has 560 or 540 cold cranking amps, which should be enough to run the RX-7. I mean the RX-8, excuse me. Now, I have read reports of NSX owners using this, and I have a personal friend who uses this in his Toyota MR2 Spider, and he's had good results with it. This is not covered under their warranty. They do not recommend it. It is for ATVs, motorcycles, etc., not car vehicles. So I am taking a little bit of a risk here, but if it works, it's a huge, huge weight reduction. We're, we're talking 35 plus pounds weight reduction over the OEM unit. So um, I've gone ahead and, and taken some time to already mock some stuff up because there, there are some modifications required to put this in. I guess you could just throw this in the car, but I'll show you why I'm not gonna do that in one sec. So before we put this in the car, one of the last things I want to mention is that because this is a full lithium ion battery, you cannot use a conventional battery charger on it. So for an extra 66 bucks on Amazon, I bought the specific charger that's for it. And I've read that on cars that have constant draw, like for modern electronics, you can go about two weeks of idle time before you may have some issues starting. So. Um, if you're gonna let the car sit longer for that time period, I think it's gonna be advisable to, to put it on the tender. So, like I said, I'm kind of guinea pigging this, so I'm not saying go out and buy this. And again, this is not supported by Shorai to put this in an automobile. But um, if it works out and it's, a, and it's a success, then I would definitely relay that feedback to you guys if you were thinking about do, you know, getting one of these for your cars for the, for the weight savings. Because if it does work out, this is a huge, huge weight savings. So I'm really, really hoping, fingers crossed. So if I remove the factory battery covers and I just put the battery in the car, in the, in the OEM tray, as you can see here, I have a, a pretty big um, opening now and the unit itself doesn't quite fill up the whole tray. Um, and I, I'm trying to, in the process here, clean everything up because I do like how much the engine bay is opening up with um, all the OEM stuff, air pump assembly, everything being removed, it's starting to look like a proper engine bay and it's making things a little bit more accessible. So um, I'm not gonna run it like this. You definitely could run it like this. The only thing you would have to modify is your factory tie down points because they are too tall to, for, for, this, for this battery because of the, the, the height. So I will be modifying those in the process. Um, the way I'm gonna mount these terminals is I'm gonna remove these bolts to, uh, to get the, uh, the rings off and I'm gonna bolt them straight down onto the battery like so. So that's another thing that we're gonna be doing and I'll show you what they give you for hardware with the battery. But um, here, one more thing, let me take this out and I'll just show you what this looks like without it. So the other reason I wanna keep this space open is because the sewn oil metering adapter line is down here and it's just a chintzy piece of uh, rubber hose clear rubber hose, so I wanna be able to keep an eye on that in case it breaks or is getting melted. Um, so that's the other reason why I wanna, I wanna have a little bit more visibility. So what I've done here is I've mocked up the factory battery tray. It's actually a pretty strong piece. It's a, you can see it's a fiber reinforced plastic and you can see all the fiberglass weaving through it. Um, so I've marked it. I'm gonna actually just cut it and I'm gonna cut it in a way where I can reuse the OEM mounting points and then, but I'm sure I'm taking off from here over, still leaving this backside, basically just giving me enough to rest the battery in here and then, and then open up everything else around it. So that's how I'm gonna be modifying it. These are cheap if you want to go back to a stock one, so I don't really care about cutting up my, my stock one for this install. But uh, we're, we're gonna start there and then I'll show you what we gotta do to modify the battery tie down.
All right, all right. So now that our OEM battery tray is modified, uh, you can see I, I, leave, I left the mountain points for the OEM location, so I got three to hold it down. This is a very stiff piece of plastic. It's very stout. I think this should have no problem holding a five pound battery. Um, but I'm, I still have the OEM locations for the factory tie downs. So the battery's gonna sit in here just like so, okay? And going to the tie downs now. So here's the full length tie down. It's gonna hook in right here. But you could see it's way too tall. My threads end up here. I need the overall length to be about where I marked it here and I gotta bring the threads down farther. So I already went ahead and modified one. And what we're gonna do is we are going to cut this here and then I'm gonna use a metric six by one tap and I'm gonna tap the threads down to about yay long and that will give us the appropriate length that we need to tie the battery down. And I'm not gonna be using the OEM tie down anymore because as you can see here, it doesn't grab the battery, so it's just gonna be a bar that's sitting across the battery. So what I did was I took some aluminum flat stock that I had, you could buy this at Lowe's Home Depot. I cut it to the length to meet to the mounting points. And I drilled a hole there and there. I just kind of did this ahead of time to, to save us some time for the video. But this is what I'm gonna be using for the tie down, and then I will clean this up more to make it look a little bit more prettier. So let's modify our tie down rod, we will cut it and, and thread it down. So as you can see, I rounded the end here so I have somewhere to start with the tap and I can, it'll just make getting the tap going a little bit easier. So I'm gonna clamp it down here to a vise. And I marked where I want to bring my threads down to to match the other one. So nice and tight. Start with our metric six by one tap. Try to get it going as straight as we can here. Okay, that looks pretty straight. So I'm gonna take my tap tool here Put it on and just start working it in nice and easy, backing up a little bit to clean up any gunk. fellas so now we have our two candy cane uh, tie downs here we could do a quick mock-up putting it in place so we'll position it right about there all right not bad not bad and I'm gonna clean up this this plate here I'm gonna try to uh, put a little bit of pattern in it with uh, with a wire wheel and see if it looks okay with that. I'm probably gonna end up painting the box just to hide all my, my marker lines and the, the fibers that are popping through. I'll just do it, spray it a nice coat of black. Uh, maybe I'll paint the, uh, the tie down at the same time. Let me see if I can do something fancy here real quick and see if it'll make it look any prettier. So here's a before. So overall, not too bad. Uh, I, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm gonna say it again. I did 
after I cut this, I, I did bevel the corners so there's no sharp edges on it, and I kind of, you know, ran over all the edges with sandpaper to, to smooth it down and to, and to make it uh, not as like not as sharp anywhere. But it feels not too bad. If I was really bored, I'd maybe drill some holes in it to skeletonize it or something. But it is just freaking aluminum. It's not like this is very heavy at all. <laughs> So I'm gonna run this as is, I think, for now, but I still think I will spray the box with just a quick coat of black to uh, uh, make it look just a little bit, a little bit more pretty. So the next step in the process is we have to put our hardware to the, uh, well, actually, I don't know if I'm gonna, I gotta, let me, let me take a minute here and just figure out exactly how I'm gonna bolt the terminals to this. They, did, they do supply different adapters for here, but I don't even think I need to run them. So uh, be right back. All right, so here's the solution that I've come up with. So I have my battery mocked up, how it's gonna sit in the car. And I actually have these aluminum spacers that were just kicking around for God knows how long. Uh, you can achieve this same result with just some washers, but you could, as you can see, it, it's almost the same overall diameter as the contact terminal. I'm going to take some old S2000 uh, valve cover grommets, <laughs> and I'm gonna use these as like kind of like a washer stainless steel metric six by 100 bolt and it's going to go through the terminal link penetrate through and then it's going to hold it in like so and then the washer will be will look like that with the terminal sandwiched in between it it'll just look kind of pretty and uh, will do its job and it'll make good contact so those are the, uh, the three items we're aiming for so now i have to go like i said i got to remove those uh, the, the, the terminals off of the OEM battery harness. So here are the factory terminals removed. I didn't bring my camera over there because it's plugged in right now because the battery is dying on it. But uh, it's just these 12 millimeter nuts, uh, the head of nuts that hold them on. The ground side has grounds connected to it, so just make sure when you go to tie the, the battery in that you run the grounds through the through the bolt as well. But that's it for this. So I'm going to paint the box, clean it up, and then we will throw it all in the car and see if it starts. So now that the paint has dried, here's our new modified battery tray. Uh, not too bad. Just a quick, uh, quick couple coats of uh, Rust-Oleum I think this is engine enamel. I just had it laying around. So the end result here is that the battery is gonna mount just the way the stock battery does, and it's gonna sit just like this. And the tray is, is long enough, it's the same width as the battery. So it minimizes the space, keeps it as light as possible, but we still have all three factory mounting points, like so, for stability. Here's our finished uh, $5 tie-down. I'm probably just gonna run this for a little while and I'll see if it pits or tarnishes. Uh, modified candy canes for the, for the reduced height. And for hardware, I always like to keep, whenever I go to Lowe's or Home Depot, I buy stainless metric six, like just common metric bolt sizes, so I always have them on hand uh, and nuts and washers as well. So I'm gonna be using these to lock it down because the other ones had acid leaked onto them and they're all corroded and look like doo-doo. So let's, uh, Let's go ahead and, and put this girl in the car. So one quick thing to note before I put this in, because these are different metals, I don't know if there's gonna be any risk of a reaction or corrosion occurring. So I'm gonna use a little bit of dielectric grease uh, as a barrier in between them. And uh, you know, just to possibly prevent that if that will be an issue.
right guys, so here is the moment of truth. Now I didn't do any charging of this battery. This is exactly how I received it. Um, I'm probably gonna throw it on the tender after tonight just because I'm just gonna try to start it real quick and see if it actually starts the car. And one of the things I'm gonna be observing is how easy does it start the car? Does it, does it seem like it cranks it up like with, with authority or does it seem like it struggles? So I'd be interested to see. We are gonna find out right now. Look at that, not bad. So the car's been sitting for, I don't know, a couple months now. I haven't, I've, I've driven it maybe once this whole winter because we just haven't had the weather. And um, that started pretty good, cold start, fired right up, uh, sounded healthy. Again, it's 540 cranking amps with this unit. It's the, it's the highest model that Shoreye makes, so. We'll see how this goes. It's, uh, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see. And uh, I'll let you guys know. I'll probably do a follow-up just to let you know how it, how it works out in the long run. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'm out 250 bucks for a battery, but at least we explored it and uh, gave it a whirl. So that is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you see and you like this channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help it. Um, people don't ask that for no reason. I didn't want to be a person to ask that, but I'm going to ask you. If you like it, leave a like and leave a comment. And uh, it definitely helps the videos get pushed and, and, and put out there. So I really do appreciate that. But thank you so much again. And uh, stay tuned for the next installment for Project RX8, Project Great Daily. That's it for this one, guys. Done. So now that our paint has dried, here is the new revised battery cover. I shouldn't say battery cover, 